I, to be honest, I don't know where to start this video. Um, it's tough. It's It's been 24 hours since we learned that Kobe Bryant passed away. Um, I was at work and this girl, she has a, a weird accent sometimes, like a southern accent, and she got on the, the mic, radio, whatever you want to call it, and she said, Kobe's dead. Um, and then my manager said, don't say that. And then she said, uh, I'll just how the way she said it, it was like, Kobe's dead. So <laughs> that might be funny, but that's what it sounded like. So me you know we always will talk between each other if there's you know there's been famous people athletes that have come into our nike stores here in the orlando market so um i thought that she had said you know kobe's dad that he was in the store so i repeated back you said kobe's dad and she said no Kobe's dead and you know I I didn't think nothing of it because like that's the last thing you would think to hear you know I, it was just a surreal moment to be to hear that um, and so I was alone in my area so I walked over to where one of my friends was standing and he already had his phone out and he was looking it up and he couldn't find anything i don't know he said his twitter or something was something was wrong with it so i pulled out my phone and i just looked up you know kobe bryant and the tmz article popped up and you know he asked me like is it true he's not a i don't think he's a basketball fan by any means but he asked me like is it true and and I told him, I, I think it is. And for some reason, that Saturday night before, um, I have another pair of these. This is that same shoe. This one I keep in the box and I would never wear it, but I got two pairs and I wear the other ones and I haven't worn those and I don't even know how long. And something told me Saturday, to before that I had to wear those shoes. I had to wear these shoes. And this is the, the Kobe 11, um, the model that he last played in, you know, with the Lakers. Not the same color, obviously, because he had so many colors, but the same model. And, and something told me, just, just wear your Kobe's, wear those Kobe's. Um, and so I did, and and my friend, you know, looked at me and, and, and he said, and he was like, wow, you, you're wearing his shoes. and at that moment, I can't even describe what I felt. It was almost like losing somebody that you knew, a, a friend. I can't say a family member because that is a whole separate thing in itself, you know. Um, but when you hear of a friend or, or somebody that you were close with, you know, that you lose them, it's, it's pretty crazy and... Um, so here and, and you know I was I was weak I started to shake a little bit and I had to walk away and just kind of you know gather myself and and I sent I sent a text message to like my family and a couple people and to see like is it true um, and and they didn't want to believe it but it turns out that it was and then of course you start thinking like no this can't be true it's like how do they know if it was a helicopter crash you know from what i read really quick i'm like how do they know it was him um and of course details will come out later on but you know it was a tough moment for me i i couldn't even really continue working you know i just wanted to break down and cry and i had like a half hour um, before my lunch so thankfully um, I got to um, go to lunch and uh, you know got to be alone and, and 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 kind of process this 
you know, I didn't really want to get on social media. I didn't really want to read anything and, and nothing like that. Um, I see a lot of people from being from the Chicago area. Obviously, I, I will always say that Jordan is the greatest of all time. Nothing's going to change that. Um, but Kobe, to me, was an equal to Jordan. Um, at first, I'm not going to lie, when he came in the league, um, he, to me, he was just this flashy kid who just, you know, didn't respect his elders. He went at Jordan first game, 36 points off the bench, something like that. <laughs> I don't know the exact stats, but something like that, I'm pretty sure. And, and you know, he, he really went at him. And to me, you know, being a kid, I was just like, wow, that's that's pretty bold of him. That's crazy. You know, why why would he do something like that? You know, this was MJ. Everybody idolized him except for him. You know, he was a big Magic Johnson fan and Lakers fan. So to me, it was it was hard to accept him at the beginning. Um, but then um, Jordan retired like two years later, obviously. Um, and the NBA to me was kind of dead. We went through that brief, that lockout season where the Spurs won the championship. And, and then, and then after that, um, oh, well during that same year, you know, Dennis Rodman had gone to the Lakers. So like he, obviously he was, you know, with the Bulls, but then he went to the Lakers and. And from there, that was my little attraction towards the Lakers because being a huge Bulls fan, and then they were in a rebuilding. Well, I still love the Bulls. I still watched all their games and everything. Um, but you know, Dennis Rodman going over there kind of swayed my way over there. I still I have his jersey number seventy three with the Lakers. Um, so that kind of took me towards that way. And then I remember there was a game where. You know, Michael Jordan went to watch, I think, pretty sure it was the Houston Rockets, if I'm not mistaken, because, you know, Scotty Pippen was on that team, you know, and it was, it was Kobe Bryant, Scotty Pippen, like Dennis Rodman, you know, and Jordan was in the house, it was an NBC game, and, and so I started following the Lakers then on, and then later on, they, you know, being a Bulls fan still, you know, they took Phil Jackson as a coach, they took Ron Harper, they had Horace Grant later on that was like a second coming of the Bulls and then they had their Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and of course they had Shaq who was just a whole nother beast on himself and so to me Kobe Bryant filled that void that I was missing in watching Michael Jordan um, of course maybe he didn't win all the finals that he went to or he he didn't win multiple MVPs um, but he still wowed me and made me feel the same feelings that um, I had, you know, watching MJ. And I even remember I got, I had, I bought this book for some reason and I looked it up and it was like a, for grades three through five. And I'm pretty sure I was way much older than that um, when I got that book. And then I ended up reading it and learned a lot about Kobe and, and the stuff that he would do, such as, you know, miss um, um, winning free throws just, you know, so he could get a uh, last second shot and, and count down and stuff like that in high school. And and that was crazy to me, you know, and, and I learned everything that he went through, you know, living in a foreign country and where everybody played soccer and they, they would try to, you know, force him to play soccer when he just wanted to play basketball. I mean, he loves soccer too. He he likes soccer, um, but I couldn't imagine you know being a kid and feeling so alone like that. So I think he naturally found comfort and found home on a basketball court or playing basketball, in which he fell, you know, mm. fell deep in love with the sport, and that was his refuge. You know, that was what he turned to. Uh, for all types of moments, uh, but going on to that, then I looked up the book, and this was done before he had even won a championship, um, and I pr I did that report before he'd ever done he had ever won a championship. So from then he gained my respect. Like 
I feel that's almost more important than me being born in a city and I just happened to be lucky that it was Chicago that was the team that I rooted for with one of the greatest players ever. Um, but to me, it means more that, you know, Kobe won me over. Like, I didn't want to like this kid. I didn't I didn't want to like, you know, because no one was going to be better than MJ or it was weird, you know, um, rooting for a team that wasn't the Bulls at first. But it made it easier when watching him play. And then, like I said, all the all the the Bulls ex players that kind of, you know, headed over there and they won championships and it, it it was it was a great thing to watch and then of course you follow all the stuff between him and Shaq, all the beef and and then his legal problems and, and everything that he went through and you just you just gotta be like amazed at everything that he went through and I, I don't know. No, I feel like no. You just can't write a better career for anybody. I don't care. I don't care um, what other athlete there is out there to be a kid and to love a team so much, and then to be drafted by another team and then traded to that team, and you play twenty years and you do every, you you do every accomplishment, every accolade with that team. It's unbelievable. And, you know, it's, but the bad thing is that that's, that's just the basketball side of it. You know, I could be selfish and sit here and say, you know, we lost a, a great athlete, a great basketball player, but he was way more than that. And I actually admired him in, more than MJ in, in the sense that, you know, he was open to interviews. He did a lot of interviews and he talked about more than just basketball, like, he showed that life was more than just basketball and he was barely starting to, you know, do more things outside of basketball. He'd only been retired for four years, so it's crazy. He, you know, he won an Oscar in, in, a, in a short time, which many actors don't even get close to that. So, you know, he was barely starting to accomplish things, writing um, children's books, kids' books, and upon coaching... You know, his daughter who actually passed away with him in in the helicopter crash and and the, the that's that's the tough thing for me is to know that th he left behind three daughters and a wife and a family who you know at, at su such a young age you know 41 years old is is crazy to think about and and my condolences go to his to the family, I know it doesn't mean anything coming from, you know, a guy in front of a camera who never met this guy or anything like that. But, you know, I never got to watch Jordan play. My first ever Bulls game was because of Kobe. It was a Lakers game back when they had Karl Malone, Gary Payton, and Shaq. And they were the super team that went on to the finals, you know. And, and they eventually lost, but... That was the reason why I went to the game was to watch Kobe Bryant and you know a lot of people probably look at me and don't understand or don't believe why I would be sad but you know that's just because people don't really know me or you know they weren't with me during that time of me being a, a Lakers um, Kobe fan as you can see like I pretty much have a lot of stuff and this isn't bought you know after this is way before you know um, we we knew anything about you know him passing away or even him retiring so it's just very very sad and i look back at my first vlog that i ever made uh, i'm gonna link that in the description if you want to watch it you don't have to but i'm gonna link it in there anyway because it was just nostalgic for me to know that my first ever vlog that i made it, you know, it was mostly about him. Yeah, it was about me starting my career with Nike, but really it was about his last game. And then, you know, I was watching his last game right now. They were just replaying it, and, you know, it, he, he seemed so at peace. You know, most other people, when they're retiring their last day, you know, athletes, really, they they just... They don't know what they're gonna do after after life but he was so content and so ready to move on like 
he was having fun. And in the moment when I watched that game, the first, you know, live, I, I didn't notice that. I didn't see that, you know. it's It takes me to go back, like, watching it now, and, and, you, and you saw him having fun. It was like a pickup game for him. Yeah, he was serious, but it was mostly a pickup game. And, and that's pretty darn cool. He had his family courtside and everything, you know. And he only had two daughters at the time. And, but yeah, man, he's, he's really going to be missed and just taken too soon. And he was barely starting to do so much more. <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. I just hope to be able to, you know, wake up and, and be able to accept it, I guess. Um, I know, you know, millions of people are affected. I've seen it. I've seen, you know, the soccer community affected by it, you know, in Europe. That just shows, you know, how many people he reached. It wasn't just uh, a LA thing. It wasn't just an America thing. It, it was the whole entire world who was feeling this. And like I said, I, I just feel for his family. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I could go on forever, you know. I, I looked up to him, you know, seeing him be a great father more than a great athlete. And that's the one thing that's going to, you know, stand out to me is how much of a great dad he seemed with his daughters. And, of course, his creative side, but mostly... You know, him being a father. Oh, man, it's tough. But uh, I'm going to just end the video right now. If you want to watch my <clears throat> first ever vlog, I'm going to post this on both my channels. Um, just because, you know, hopefully we can get back to our regular scheduled um, programming within a few days because this, this is going to take a lot to process I'm not going to lie and I don't know when I'll be ready to pick up the camera again I hope soon but we'll see so rest in peace Kobe and, and Gigi and we'll see you again soon my family to my family my wife Vanessa our daughters Natalia and Gianna you know thank you guys for all your sacrifice you know, for all the hours I spent in the gym working and training, and Vanessa, you holding down the family the way that you have, I, I, I can't, there's no way that I can thank you enough for that. So, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And, uh, what can I say? Mamba out.